Ma'am, shall I start now, ma'am? Yeah, I think you're okay. Uh, yes, ma'am. Just now again, power came back, ma'am. Okay, fine. Okay, we can start. It is 5-6 yeah. already. Let's start. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, good evening, everyone. And uh, I hope everyone is okay in this uh, lockdown. And we are all here for a three-day workshop, national workshop, which is image processing and computer vision. And we had good number of registrations. And now I am request our HOD ma'am to speak few words about this workshop. Ma'am. Thank you, Mrs. Chaya. Uh, today's eminent speaker, Dr. Karthik Singh Kurtigari, uh, and the organizers of the workshop, Mr. Srinivas Naidu, and Dr. Baskar, and all the faculty of EC department and its and all the participants from uh, various uh, institutions. Very good evening to all. And very warm welcome to all of you for the first session on uh, online F FDP, three-day FDP on image processing and computer vision. Uh, first, let me thank our, uh, our resource person for kindly accepting our request to uh, to act as a resource person for three-day workshop, three-day FDP. And uh, I got uh, the information like, uh, we got a very huge response, and the total number of registrations are uh, 647. It's a huge number, actually. Uh, and we got the more number of uh, maximum registrations from Andhra Pradesh, 329. And next comes Tamil Nadu, 206. And from other states uh, like Telangana, Karnataka, Kerala, UP, Punjab, Odisha, West Bengal, Gujarat, Jammu and Kashmir, and Madhya Pradesh. And we got international participation also, actually, from Ethiopia, one, Malaysia, one person. And uh, thank you, thank you for uh, participation. And really appreciate your uh, enthusiasm to participate in these kind of uh, FTPs. I hope maybe uh, uh, you, you might be working in this area. So definitely, these three days FTP will definitely help you a lot. And you'll have fruitful sessions. I know very well uh, uh, about the resource person. We won't disappoint you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your participation. And uh, I'll join again on third day uh, to know your feedback on the list. Thank you. And I request Mrs. Chaya to introduce the resource person. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I feel privileged to introduce our resource person, Dr. Uh, Karthik Seema Gurtigaru. He received his B.Tech degree in Electronics and Communication Engineering from Vidya Jyoti Institute of Technology, Hyderabad, in 2008. In GATE 2008, he secured All India 135th rank with 99.61 percentage. In 2010, he received his M.Tech degree in Visual Information Processing and Embedded System Specialization from IIT Karakpur. He completed his PhD degree under the supervision of Professor A. N. Rajagopalan Garu, IIT Madras. Currently, he is working with TCS Research and Innovation Lab, Bangalore. His research interests include computer vision, image processing with specific focus on underwater imaging and video analytics. He successfully delivered three client projects related to drones for ind industrial automation. One of his biggest dream includes supporting thousand poor children for the education and on his personal interest he travels across India to share his knowledge to students ranging from schools to engineering college. I will I was very privileged to introduce you sir and I hope this session will be uh, will be enjoyed by everyone and I request our resource person to take over the session. Thank you. Sir. Yeah am I audible madam? Yes, yes sir. You are audible. Audible. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, let, let me uh, present. Is my screen visible? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. So let me start without any further delay. So this webinar series is a three-day session, uh, as you all know. Let me talk about uh, industrial scope today. So 
so without wasting much time and uh, when people uh, hear about me being uh, a pass out of iit kharagpur and uh, iit madras and working as research scientist with tcs research and innovation labs majority of the people think that okay uh, this this guy is going to speak some high five stuff but if, if you are in that misconception please remove such kind of an uh, thought process from your mind uh, i'm going to talk something very very simple and uh, i don't say that the subject of image processing and computer vision is simple uh, but it's very interesting and challenging and today uh, i'm going to touch upon how this subject is being used in multiple fields right so uh, today if you see uh, image processing and computer vision actually uh, is uh, uh, actually is being used widely across multiple industries it's it's not restricted to an ec triple e mechanical or to a certain engineering discipline it's used widely across multiple industries uh, and then it's it's, it's used across uh, multiple people from different kinds of specializations as well right so uh, so it's very very important these days for everyone to have the skill of image processing and computer vision and uh, one of the main reason uh, a, one of the main reason is uh, it's it's because of the industrial automation that is taking place right so and then uh, another reason why this has become so popular is uh, images and videos if you see it's mainly represented as a matrix of values in the second session we'll take a look at how images and videos are represented in uh, python or uh, for that sake in any programming language however if you see this uh, similar operations you can take care across the complete images okay and uh, mainly if you see this uh, graphic processing units and they are effectively being utilized in such scenarios right and uh, so you have a computational resources support as well when you are doing uh, when you are performing the tasks of image processing and computer vision and every industry these days has a requirement for image processing and computer vision engineers as well as the domain knowledge also plays a crucial role while designing the algorithms for certain application let me take an example of a civil engineer okay. mx record dhc record let me put proper sa i think people should go on mute yeah thanks so uh, is it, let's take an example of a civil engineer who is determined to uh, uh, inspecting the bridges railway bridges right so one of the main goal of a civil engineer there in such kind of a scenario is he has to understand uh, the what kind of defects that the bridges can have okay so if if he is looking at if he is trying to understand the nature of cracks right so then he is he should be able to uh, understand uh, he should uh, the the person who has the knowledge of image processing and computer vision also should have the knowledge of a civil engineer or at least he should need the support of a civil engineer in order to understand the nature of cracks right so how intense the crack is and uh, how actually uh, if that crack really needs a specific uh, attention as such uh, by the you know, by the experts there right so all these things a civil engineer can proceed uh, uh, can uh, can give can give to an image processing and computer vision engineer right so it's a collaboration between multiple disciplines here you can take up then only you'll be able to perform this task of automation right so and uh, in that sense image processing and computer vision engineer should understand the domain knowledge as well right in some cases the cost of data acquisition is really really huge actually okay uh, let me take an example of uh, the, of my previous experience of working with this institute called national institute of ocean technology chennai so uh, what they used to do this deep sea explorations and one of the main reason why they want to do that is to explore the methane gas on the sea beds right so if they have to do that they have to they cannot it, these uh, depths of these oceans where these uh, renewable energy sources sorry uh, the, this methane gas sources will be there Uh, will be approximately around 3000 meters or 4000 meters okay where humans can't go in that case actually they should send the robots and then do that kind of an survey across the seabed okay and if you are uh, then what national institute of ocean technology has done is they have designed a huge robot which is equipped with all the state of the art sensors and every sensors has unique ability to help the robot to navigate across and how it is not autonomous the person sitting on uh, sitting on the ship who will be operating the robot will be controlling that particular robot right so and it's not autonomous as such right so 
uh, what they do is they'll uh, so mostly the, these guys uh, do these explorations in uh, the Bay of Bengal or Arabian Sea. If they have to reach to that particular site, it will take eleven days, and for them to come back, it will take another eleven days. And uh, if the and they'll stay in the site for twenty days, right? And in that twenty days, if the weather permits, they will drop the robot for uh, they will drop the robot, and then they'll do that and uh, whatever survey they have to do, and then they're going to come back, right? So this is this is a kind of uh, uh, this is a kind of strenuous process see it's only for doing a survey for 3 days they have to travel almost for 45 days and every sir, day they travel yes uh, pardon to disturb you sir you please present your screen no i am presenting my screen i mean your presentation is not visible your face is only visible okay L let me reshare i don't Yes, madam. Is it? It is visible. Okay, madam. Okay. There are two things actually. Uh, okay. I request all participants to turn off their cameras and please pin to Dr. Karthik Siamakutti. I request and participants. In bracket, uh, presenting. So is my screen visible? Yes, sir. Now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So as I said uh, in, in this, uh, in, in this when, when somebody is doing a deep sea exploration, it's very, very intensive. So three days, uh, they'll drop the robot, they'd acquire the data there. Uh, uh, maybe it, it's in the form of images, videos, maybe other sensors, data also. They'll, they'll capture that and they're going to come back. Okay. Suppose say if you are capturing an image by using a mobile phone and if it's not coming well, what, what do you generally do? You will capture another image. Okay. But in this case, when the, when the marine engineers are dropping that robot and they are capturing the whole seabed and if the robot, if the videos or the images that they capture are not coming good, they cannot uh, effort to drop the vehicle, they cannot effort to stay there in that particular site for another extra day, they cannot effort to do that because Government of India has to spend almost 11 lakhs for everyday exploration, 45 days total and 11 lakhs per day. It's a huge expensive process. Okay, So the cost of data acquisition is very, very much, uh, very much high in these kind of an applications. And it's a responsible of, it's, it's a responsibility of image processing and computer vision engineer to understand this process and uh, it's it's his responsibility his or her responsibility to improve the quality of the images or the videos that they have to take a look right so now this is coming this is the motivation part and uh, let me even though uh, image processing and computer vision are often uh, used these two words are used interchangeably uh, there's a very thin line between them suppose say you even input as an image for a certain task and you get output as Output as an image. Output as an image. Then you call, then that particular task falls under image processing category. Okay, and uh, something like you want to uh, there is a noisy image and you want to improve its quality. Right. So that means you are giving the input as a degraded image and the output is a good quality image. That such kind of task actually fall under image processing category. However. If you give image as an input and give your description as an output, something like you want to find out what all objects are there in your image, your system should be able to automatically identify if there is a cat, if there is a dog, if there is a chair, what kind of scene it is. You are asking for some kind of a description from your system that you are designing there. right? So when you're giving image as an input and the description as an output, then you call such kind of task will fall under computer vision. Okay, I'm not touching about computer graphics and artificial intelligence. I'm not going to cover on that part. Okay, and uh, yes, a subset of artificial intelligence called deep learning. Uh, we'll briefly touch upon how deep learning is also used over here uh, for uh, computer vision and image processing. Right. So coming to the basic block diagram, uh, I'm going to repeat the same in the second session as well. Uh, uh, this is very very important. Please go through it. Uh, please uh, pay my. Uh, uh, please pay attention to my talk currently and if you have a pen and paper make a note of it as well and the first step is a data capture any image processing or computer vision task if you have to solve you have to think in terms of these five blocks 
okay how the data is captured okay whether it needs some kind of a modification or if the data uh, that you are capturing is from a vision camera which is placed on an, a drone right you should your drone should since your drone is moving the images or the videos that you are capturing such kind of a scenario will be highly will be having motion blur in it okay so it is very important for you to understand uh, how you can design your drone in such a way that your image capture process is highly stabilized okay that's that comes under data capture okay now that the noisy images are there okay now the noisy images are there or hazy images are there or uh, uh, illumination degraded uh, images are there so all these degradations you should be able to remove them first okay then only you can process them at a higher levels okay so it's very very important for you to understand how do you remove them all those tasks of image enhancement or image restoration come under pre processing block okay if if your system needs a specialized uh, a resolution if your system needs uh, some kind of a special uh, temporal frame rate okay you should be your your uh, complete you should be able to design your algorithm in such a way that uh, it should be able to adjust that frame rate as well okay so that come all these tasks comes under the pre processing block now coming to the feature extraction and uh, you should be able to extract in a feature suppose say you want to infer a certain kind of a text in it suppose you are designing a system which can recognize the license plates the numbers written on the license plates okay if you have to do that you should be able to extract enough features which can detect that text okay so this feature extraction it today uh, is no more handcrafted but uh, is 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 no more handcrafted however uh, it's it's uh, it by using deep learning they tend to do it okay and now coming to the region of interest uh, now i have to identify the region of interest let's take an example of uh, maintaining the social distancing in uh, covid 19 use case okay and now where you have to given a surveillance video or an image uh, surveillance set of images uh, or a surveillance video you should be able to identify the humans okay in that particular scene actually you can uh, in that particular scene uh, actually you sh- the most important regions for you are people nothing else in that okay our people are maintaining enough distance between uh, one another okay so that is what you need to primarily check for okay so the region of interest is people you should be able to identify the people from the rest of the other objects in the scene and you should be able to infer how far they are that comes under scene inference this is a basic building block diagram okay okay and uh, so ca- can somebody confirm if my screen is visible sir your screen is not visible uh, please once again share your screen Uh, but it is very clear yeah uh, it is very clear madam because somebody uh, in the middle of the they have to, they have to choose the visible presenting fixing presenting yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. one second please share your screen yeah yeah one last time participants please don't present your screen that will disturb the host that will disturb the presentation i request participants to don't present their screen that will disturb the presentation kartik sir please take over is my screen visible now yes sir yes yes okay now let's go ahead uh, with the how image processing in computer vision is used in multiple industries right so uh, the first one being the semiconductor industry suppose say you want to identify uh, a defects on the silicon wafers right so how do you do it okay so that is the and then there, there is a beautiful set of algorithms called uh, anomaly detection algorithms in image processing and computer vision which helps you to identify a defects in a scene or an image okay here the defects are the scratches or water peeling sorry wafer peeling so these are the different kinds of defects i have shown only two defects however there will be multiple other defects uh, which might be there and which you may use image processing or computer vision while 
automating this process okay and uh, if if somebody if one of you if some of you have worked on how uh, the, on electron microscopic images this is how electron microscope images looks like okay the first you see the small area here and then this small area is being expanded and it's highly noisy here okay and this noise has to be eliminated before any further processing can be done on this in the same way here if you see there's a heavy noise uh, heavy noise that you can see in this image in the left image and the right image if you see the noise is remote okay but but the main problem of denoising algorithms is sometimes the useful information will also be remote okay so your denoising algorithms should be robust enough in understanding the noise formation process and once the noise formation process is clearly understood then you can design algorithms around it on how you can remove the noise in these images right this is how it's it's basically used in semiconductor industry coming to the industrial boilers if you see uh, this is one of the project that we did uh, uh, as uh, in, in our company and uh, with, with one of our client here mainly these kind of a boilers actually it's being used in power generation industries and uh, these boilers all have let me use my pointer yeah these these boilers all have uh, the, the different settings and based on these settings the coal which is there is being burned and the fire will be generated okay now if the settings are not optimal what happens is the fire burning efficiency will be sorry the coal burning efficiency will be very very poor okay so what industrial boilers will do is here uh, they they install this camera and then they capture this fire from this fire they extract the properties of this fire and then once they have extracted the properties of the fire they'll build a machine learning model on top of it after building the machine learning model it, it will help you to understand what should be the optimal settings of this boiler in order to maximize the coal burning efficiency right this is how image processing or computer vision is used if you see this this particular task it can very well be related with this basic block diagram okay participants please stay tuned there is a technical glitch sir will start his presentation soon very soon yeah can someone confirm if if my screen is visible screen yet not visible sir
ओके हाउ हाउ अबाउट नाउ यस सर यू आर विजिबल एंड ऑडिबल योर स्क्रीन इज आल्सो विजिबल नाउ ओके प्लीज प्रोसीड सर या थैंक्स थैंक्स फॉर लेटिंग मी नो सो Uh, this industrial boilers like uh, so this that's how industrial boilers it's been used okay let me touch upon this interesting application i was mentioning right the bridge inspection uh, how it is being used is see this uh, the, the, if, if you have to monitor the railway bridges there's such a kind of huge cranes you should run across these bridges and then this cranes the people will be standing on these cranes and then they'll be monitoring these bridges okay this is how the the bridge monitoring happens in general okay but however uh, this is highly risky and uh, manually intensive now what people are doing is they started flying drones now okay and now they started flying drones and if you see here just a second i'll use my pointer yeah and you fly drones and then this person uh, he will fly this drone across this bridge and then do the same kind of a monitoring which is done here in the left left hand side to my left hand picture the same kind of monitoring is done on these bridges okay so that is that is a biggest advantage with the latest image processing technology okay and uh, so so how the image processing is being used here the there'll be few cameras which will be installed on these drones okay here if you see this the bottom part which is hanging over here this is the camera okay and now this this camera ca con continuously captures this data and transmits back to the user who is operating here this is the inspector who is operating here and he will be seeing the defects there okay this is how uh, you can automate your image processing uh, by using image processing in computer vision you can simplify your uh, many of industrial automation tasks okay the railway bridges are not only above the water sometimes they will be below the water also okay so for which earlier what they used to do is they send the people in this harsh environments and then they'll just they try to monitor it <laughs> right sorry uh, and uh, they they'll try to monitor this uh, environments uh, they, they they try to manually they try to monitor this kind of an environments okay and uh, suppose say now uh, how they are how to people started doing is they they started uh, uh, deploying the robots there if you see here it's the underwater robots that they are there they are continuously monitoring this bridge and then uh, and then uh, and then the complete the inspection process as per uh, as they used to do with uh, humans being in there right so and now what 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 they what kind of sensors again they'll use here for these autonomous vehicles is is the same vision sensors they again use but if you use vision sensors inside the water what what are the typical challenges that you will have is absolutely highly challenging because uh, your images uh, inside the deep inside the water your vision will be absolutely poor okay and then it's not the same algorithms that apply outside water will not be applicable inside the water okay so it's very very difficult for a person to do such, this kind of an uh, so it, so as as an image processing or a computer vision engineer what you need to typically do is Uh, you should be able to handle all these kind of a challenges okay and soon we'll talk about the challenges which are there in underwater images okay and uh, sewage pipeline inspection is another application which will be very very useful okay so uh, and then if you see here uh, earlier what they used to do is they send they used to send the people in order to uh, identify where there are blockages in the drainage pipes or the sewage pipes okay whatever you call okay and uh, but nowadays in order to simplify the task what they start what they have started doing is they started sending these kind of robots which will travel across these pipelines and then they'll manual they they'll try to use these robots in order to inspect the exact location where the problem is okay once they have identified they'll send people to that particular location and try to rectify the uh, problem okay and this is so my robot should have all the kind of intelligence in order to detect travel across this sewage pipelines as well as detect the defects whatever are there okay these are some of the challenges in underwater images if you see uh, this is the famous diagram that is being there uh, in your plus 1 and plus 2 physics where the light is entering from one medium to the other medium and then there is a bend in the way uh, in in the direction in which it propagates 
okay so this phenomena is called as refraction and the principle which governs this refraction is called snell okay and if you see here uh, the fish is watching this cat okay at a particular location however it's not exactly at that location it is at a different location this is called as a virtual object position this is called as a real object position okay and uh, and then the same because of this refraction effect what happens is if you place any object inside the water what, suppose say here in this case it's a chessboard pattern the all the horizontal and the vertical lines actually will straight lines will get curvy in nature because of this refraction effect okay these kind of a distortions we call it as geometric distortions and there are another set of distortions related to color called as photometric distortions okay suppose say if i am calling this uh, this water bottle wa what i have is a red color one what property of this water bottle makes it to appear as red is because the la white light is falling onto this water bottle and the light is getting reflected back onto the camera and that's how you are able to see this as a red color okay that particular see the that that kind of an uh, that kind suppose say the red wavelength is not reaching this water bottle for some reason okay then i will not be able to see anything out of this red uh, red color object and this appears as a black and the color it loses its color okay the same thing happens in underwater when the white light is traveling across okay the red will be attenuated faster when compared to the blue because the white light is not a single color of light it's it's a combination of uh multiple wavelengths together from 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers is what makes it to be white white color okay and the red wavelength in it absorbs in the water very faster when compared to the blue blue wavelengths and it's exactly the same reason why majority of your underwater images appear to be as uh appear to be as a bluish or the greenish kind of a tinge okay so this this kind of an appearance based distortions we call it as a photometric distortions okay this is the shape distortions are called as geometric and these are the photometric distortions okay and uh, if i take an example of the advanced driving assistance system these are this is one such application where image processing and computer vision is used very very extensively okay and uh, suppose say these driving assistance systems they work really well when they are operating on a clean roads okay where the road uh, dividers and markers are very very cleanly visible okay if they are not cleanly visible in a cluttered environment like indian roads it's very very difficult to travel on such kind of a roads okay also uh, uh, also if if you are traveling on these hill stations what happens there will be in fog or the haze which will be uh, uh, which will be dominating your scene basically okay and because of which there will be poor visibility and your camera will not be able to see the scene properly in such a case how will you assist if the camera itself is not able to look at the scene properly how will you be able to assisting how will you be able to assist your i'm extremely sorry guys i'm switching off my phone uh so uh this uh, yeah sorry what i am saying this haze right if if the haze is present in the scene what happens is uh, this uh, uh, it's it, it will obstruct the field it, it will obstruct the view actually okay so your camera itself is not able to see properly and how it can assist the drivers okay so this is this is a major disadvantage with uh, uh, autonomous car system these days okay and uh, if you have to use the same autonomous driving system or the driverless cars on this kind of a hill stations where there is a lot of haze and in it your system should have enough intelligence in order to remove that haze first and help the driver uh, to see the scene properly okay this is how image processing and computer vision plays an important role in driving assistance system okay and uh, here the robots are traveling in uh, underwater seas okay and uh, and it's uh, it's uh, the visibility is very very poor in these robots okay and uh, uh, in for for these robots because it's traveling in the water and the light will be absorbed in it okay and the whatever uh, so the dehazing algorithms which we developed here uh, were able to recover very well the whatever regions which are not visible here came into visibility here whatever regions which are not visible here came into visibility here okay so this is the main advantage of uh, having a dehazing algorithms onto the onto your system okay if we have such kind of an intelligence then only it's possible okay and the container yard surveillance 
okay is another application very very important application uh, uh, these days uh, in in shipyards you will see a lot of these containers okay it's very very difficult for someone to track which container is coming in and which container is going out okay so what uh, what uh, people have started using is they have uh, what in fact tcs has uh, their own solution on how do you uh, identify track the containers by using the ids okay we use this optical character recognition technology and uh, uh, one among the major topics in the three day webinar session i'll completely focus on ocr uh, how do you practically use ocr and uh, we'll do some practical experiments i'll show you in collab how to do those practical experiments as well okay and if you see here the uh, one of the major thing that you have to detect when when you are having such kind of an uh, containers you will be you should be able to detect the ids okay and then you should be able to infer the text in those ids okay this is very very important and then uh, the, and then for which you need a technology like optical character recognition and see because these images are nothing but a matrix of values okay from this matrix of values how do you infer this text called wm53dbt0800 that is what is all about optical character recognition and that's a, that's where the role of a computer vision engineer in order to infer this text right and uh, one of the biggest challenges is the traditional optical character recognition algorithms will be able to work well only if your text is very neat and clean however if you see here in this case the text is curvy in nature and uh, the optical so the traditional algorithms might fail and your system should be able to uh, should be robust enough in order to capture these kind of an distortions also okay and if you here if you see this kind of an scene this is also placed inside the water okay let me play this video okay this is a scene inside the water and there's a dynamic water surface so there are few applications for marine engineers where they have to read the uh, numbers on the underwater cables the cables are inside the water and the people are there outside the water okay and these cables typically tend to be not in this kind of a clean water however in the kind of a very murky water okay and you can assume this kind of a setup also because this is a lab setup which we did in my uh, lab during my iit madras days and uh, if i have a dynamic water surface there will be obviously the kind of distortions okay and if somebody is trying to infer the number on the cables which are lying underwater cables okay so if they have to automate that process they should be able to build a system which will be able to remove these kind of a distortions and give me a clean text of image processing and computer vision lab iit madras clean text should be given out your system should have such kind of an ability that's where the role of again an image processing and a computer vision engineer can come in okay you can help big time the marine engineers field the people who are working in marine so electromagnetic spectrum has wide wavelengths it's not only the visual wavelength of 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers it has several wavelengths in it so you have multiple modalities covering the ranges from the lidar uh, visual data hyperspectral data thermal data and x ray right so there are different uh, uh, kind of an uh, different kinds of modalities are there okay this is another application crucial application in the mining industry where the image processing and computer vision plays a very very important role here the scenario is this is a mining place and then if you are digging at an inappropriate location there will be sudden steam outburst which will be happening okay now here one of the ask uh, for by this client who worked with us was uh, to help them to identify this outburst well in advance and detect this uh, steam regions because if you see here this guy is dropping off this person is dropping off some kind of a dust and because of the dust also there will be some upward movement here okay and uh, and this is looks very much similar to the steam regions okay and a person who is trying to do this kind of a steam identification analysis he should be able to clearly distinguish between this dust as well as steam also it should be able to identify multiple steam regions once it has been identified he should be able to extract the properties of the steam regions and then do kind of an machine learning analysis on top of it okay there are a few attempts by government of india in order to digitize the heritage sites for this sake you see here this is a kind of an uh, image which is captured in uh, this is the image which we captured in mm, i don't remember the temple's name but this is in hampi and in karnataka 
and uh, where the where the statue is broken where the lion is there and the statue is broken okay uh, and if you want to digitize these heritage sites okay and then what you need to have in digitization is you should be able to have an walk through inside in say in your web browser you should be able to have a walk through complete walk through uh, digitally digitally as such okay if you want to have such kind of an experience then you should be able to recover these kind of an uh, stones broken stones digitally okay we, so what we have typically done is we have built an uh, 3d reconstruction model okay and then once we have built a 3d reconstruction model we are we have recovered this part okay once we have reco recovered this part and this can be integrated into the complete 3d Uh, uh point cloud of this temple properly okay and this is how you can restore it okay this might look like a uh, simple application but let me talk about some other interesting application which government of india is taking up okay the government of india wants to digitize the heritage sites deep inside the water there are few heritage sites if you see in movies or the digital oceanography channels uh, you will typically tend to see scuba divers doing some kind of an analysis around the Uh, uh around the monuments uh, or the buried underwater sites these kind of a temples okay in indonesia i have heard there are few temples which are buried okay and uh, if somebody wants to know more about the temples okay how how we can know because this digitization technology will definitely help there for which again image processing and computer vision plays a very very crucial role okay covid 19 detection right so the x ray images because these kind kind of a technology is a covid 19 these days if you must be aware of the doctors are extremely busy okay and uh, so they should do they should be allocated some import they should be able to do some important tasks they cannot be allotted these kind of an task where uh, chest x ray images are given okay so uh, they, they cannot sit and uh, see currently what they are doing is they manually they are trying to identify from this chest x ray chest x ray images if there is a presence of covid 19 or not okay you based on some kind of an rough uh, guess or rough features uh, they they are trying to identify this covid 19 the uh, presence of a covid 19 in chest x ray images okay but how if, if you are using this kind of a technology uh, but the latest image processing technology you can automate this process and help the doctors in order to identify this so that the doctors can concentrate in much more important tasks in taking care of these patients right and uh, th this this work actually if somebody is interested in medical imaging i think they should look at this paper called karim et al archive 2020 in, it's available in archive okay and then you should be uh, and the data set and the source code everything is available so that you can download and then uh, work on top of it right so this is this is how image processing and computer vision uh, will be helpful in biomedical field okay there are some more interesting applications but due to lack of time i'm closing this session now and uh, i'll be talking more about it uh, in the second uh, in the second session okay and in case uh, if you want to get in touch with me this is not the email id I have changed this to this okay this is how i'll be there this is the email id i'll be using more and this is how i'll be there on linkedin okay dr kartik simakurthy okay this is all for the first session so hope you got a perspective about uh how image processing how important this field of image processing and computer vision is right so uh, no matter what kind of engineering discipline you come from it is used in marines it is used in uh, digitizing the temples it is used in, in autonomous driving systems uh, uh, helping the mechanical engineers it is used in railway bridge inspection helping the civil engineers it is used in semiconductor entry, uh, industry helping the electronics engineers so it's it's not uh, so days are gone when you can when where you restrict image processing where the where you restrict the subject of image processing and computer vision uh, alone uh, to only to this uh, only to specific uh, areas of work right so uh, so you i i think this that's a uh, it's it's been widely accepted and uh, it's been widely used uh, between uh, in industries by different kinds of people okay and that's all from my side for the first session and uh, i'm open for any questions right now i have 10 more minutes for the session yeah good evening sir
good evening sir uh, sir i was uh, myself samir yes samir sir uh, i have i have some doubts regarding uh, medical images yes please tell sir medical uh, resources only their particular section has using that uh, image processing or uh, uh, any other uh, medical fields are uh, using that image uh, so like computer vision and image processing yeah but actually it is a wide variety of fields in surgery people are using uh, medical image and processing because these days if you have seen there are a uh, uh, few movies also they are depicting about uh, doing surgery with the robots right so uh for which image processing and computer vision plays a very very important role and uh, yes of course in, uh, in in tool detection right so uh, right suppose say if if a robot is doing a surgery then it has to identify different tools necessary for the surgery right so in identifying those tools uh, so the this kind of image processing or the segmentation image segmentation algorithms especially they are widely uh, uh, they will be very very helpful as such right even in something like cancer detection yes they still use uh, and then uh, for detecting uh, uh, what do you say diabetes diabetic retinopathy by retin retinal images retinal fundus images uh, they do detect the diabetic uh, if a person is diabetic or not right so there is some specific uh, class of uh, people who are uh, badly affected in their eyes right so so i don't yes image processing and computer vision again it's widely applicable in multiple areas of biomedical engineering sure sir sure thank you kartik sir yes sir uh, there is one participant asking one doubt sir in the chat box ha uh. am i audible sir kartik sir yes 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 please is it possible to fix the datum level and depth level features if protostrazen is present in the surface in image processing sorry uh, can i look at the chat uh, i am repeating the question sir or i will uh, post it sir in the chat okay just a second i am i am looking at the chat 14 at 549 pm okay okay got it is it possible to fix the datum level and the depth level features if protrusion is present in the surface in the image processing okay this looks something interesting uh, i am not aware of it if if i'm if, if you can tell me what is the datum level and if you can little bit uh, if you can elaborate a bit i can help you in answering this question will it be possible to unmute mr tirumurugan Yes, sir. I will try to unmute him. Yeah. Yam Tirumugan. M Tirumugan sir, please unmute your mic. Sir, good evening. Ah, uh, good evening, sir. Uh, sir, I, actually the data which I am referring, okay. uh, when you uh, when you have a very level, uh, I mean image, okay, like a drone image, you uh, you said no. Yes. Yeah, uh, when you are taking a image uh, at the higher level, so you have a surface level uh, integrity, right? Yes. The kind of integrity, the absent values, absent value. I'm sorry, your uh, voice is not clear. Okay. Tirumurugan, Mr. Tirumurugan, can you please email uh, me your question? Uh, we can discuss uh, offline, right? Okay, okay, sir. I'll I'll yeah. make it. Your voice is not very clearly uh, audible. Else, I would have answered it. I'll mail to you, sir. No problem. Yeah, yeah. Please me email me. We'll get in touch. I'll definitely help you out. Okay. Sir, I have one question, sir. Yeah, hello. Yes, please go ahead. Sir, in uh, Indian scenario, 
uh, how is the medical image processing has evolved in indian scenario because of many i have seen many uh, journals it uh, many journals uh, implementation is from outside of the country only china or in so what is the current scenario in our indian research uh, in image processing no it is very well explored sir if you, if you see uh, maybe you can go on mute i'll to, okay uh, if you to answer uh, to my best okay uh, see some of the technologies which we work on currently today is uh, identifying the landmarks okay and we do also uh, identify we work on uh, identifying this diabetic retinopathy kind of an work okay and uh, there are uh, uh, we, we still do this uh, something like a tumor detection okay and yes uh, there are uh, definitely a great attempts that are uh, we are currently working on on identifying covid 19 also from uh, different modalities of images that we tend to capture yes yes uh, i think so yes it's it's a widely explored field in medical imaging but however as you rightly said uh medical imaging is something it's very very difficult to adopt because the data availability will be uh, an issue there okay so the medical imaging i don't uh, it's it's very it's it's restricted to very few institutions or universities maybe that's the reason you find it very very less okay and uh, or if, if you are looking for some kind of an uh problem or how to solve it maybe if you can drop me an email i will uh, definitely get back to you after consulting to my uh, colleagues who are an experts in medical image okay so uh, i hope i have answered your question yeah thank you very much sir you answered properly yeah i am looking for problem thank you very much i am definitely yeah, making this sir yeah, yeah in case if you have any uh, specific problem that you want to work on uh, please uh, uh please drop me an email and then i will uh, get back to you sir yeah, thank you thank you sir yeah uh, yeah kartik sir yes please uh, can you suggest uh, which tools are uh, very useful in the uh, computer vision and uh, image processing for uh, nowadays yeah tools so i i uh, i'll be covering about that in detail in the second and third sessions so you will oh. get the complete information about it okay okay sure sir i was asking uh, regarding basic uh, what that languages uh, other tools like that yes 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 I, i'll be covering about that in the second session or third session most likely sure sure sir thank you right. and uh, somebody is asking to uh, detail the procedure for uh, digitization of uh, temple architectures right so temple architectures yes uh, it is a very very difficult task uh, for me to tell you and uh, and it is what we have done is the way we have done is uh, to identify uh, f- first we will try to capture multiple images around a particular architecture or an object and then what we try to do is we will get a 3d point cloud of it okay once we have got a uh, what do you say sparse 3d point cloud we will get a dense 3d point cloud also okay now once we get a dense 3d point cloud if there are any broken statues what we will do is we will use this procedure of painting uh, i i hope you must have seen uh, or uh, uh, heard about this process called uh, in painting in images okay once you have used uh, in image uh, something like an ima- image in painting you will use something called 3d in painting for point clouds once you have used such kind of a procedure you will be able to restore the uh, broken statues okay so this is the basic uh, flow that is being fo- that is fo- that was followed in uh, digitizing this temple architectures okay i hope i have answered your question and another somebody else was talking about can we expect about latest uh, algorithms in future sessions uh, i'm not sure but yes i'll give you a perspective about it okay and uh, if you can text us in what field you are looking for a latest algorithms maybe uh then uh, i'll see if i can introduce them in the coming future sessions as planned something but however if it's useful for the complete audience i'll definitely uh, do it okay and uh, yes yes you can mail me all your doubts uh, kartik iitm87 at gmail.com that is my uh, gmail id and you can mail me and uh, and if you see 
can can you tell me how neural network is used in image processing of course yes and uh, maybe we'll cover some aspects of it in the upcoming sessions uh, about uh, uh, about neural networks participants if you have any doubts please respond now i request participants to clear if you have any doubts sir good evening yes good evening sir yeah this is uh, this is sudhakar sir i am uh, i am working on medical images especially ultrasound images okay a uh, quite number of publications are available in iit image processing i okay. want to ask you regarding how to fix the initial region of interest as far as ultrasound images are concerned because it is purely of uh, black and white in nature yeah, right even if you go for pre processing also sometimes the original features which is present in the ultrasound uh, lung images can also be deteriorated because it is almost your uh, noise is also similar with respect to your uh, original uh, uh, matter which is available in terms of ultrasound correct okay. now we are getting the help from uh, radiologist and then we are uh, radiologist only they are giving that roi possibly mm -hmm. this may be the problem with respect to because there are uh, couple of quite couple of n or more set of uh, problems available with respect to uh, lungs or lung side type of uh, diseases Uh, starting mm. from a small uh, 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 lung cancer with respect to the up to the deterioration of the lung with respect mm. to the percentages we have mm. uh, that which is called as cirrhosis uh, 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 cancer etc we have published the paper both in iit image processing version 1 and version 2 we mm -hmm. have gone for some automated roi with the help of uh, uh, radiologist is it mm. possible for us without going with the help of uh, doctors Mm -hmm. a radiologist can we okay. go for an roi mm -hmm. there are multiple things are even active counter algorithm every many set of algorithms are available is it possible mm -hmm. for us to go for an automated roi that is a mm -hmm. question i also posted that in the chat box also mm -hmm. uh, my question is how to go for an automated roi specifically with respect to lung type of cancer detection okay okay so uh, sudhakar sir uh, i don't come from this kind of a background but i'll uh, yeah. do my best to answer you okay from my experience and uh, so have you explored the uh, uh, image segmentation by using deep learning approach in uh, for these kind of an images that you are talking about yeah uh, specifically okay no have you explored it i have not gone for uh, deep learning okay. you have gone for up to optimization of algorithms so selecting the best features and then we are going for uh, making that uh, with respect to the yes uh, as you said are going on we are current yeah. as you as you said ultrasound images are highly challenging sir uh, i think the best uh, bet would be to go, go ahead with uh, using uh, image segmentation algorithms uh, using deep learning are fairly matured these days uh, how big is your data set yeah Uh, it depends upon uh, you, you want the size or resolution uh, i am talking about the number of images that What? are available for you marked by radiologist yeah the number of images it is quite more than uh, 2000 sir 1000 more than 2000 more than 2000 at very uh, from then you the then you have a lot of data sir actually you should explore uh, deep learning image yes. segmentation deep yeah, learning currently we are work, yeah, yeah yeah currently uh, currently we are working on Okay. Ah. I, I think that's 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 the that's the best bet. Okay, so there are very yeah. efficient yeah. algorithms that are available. I think you should go ahead and then uh, do it. Okay, and in case if if you are not able to uh, proceed, yes, sir, uh, please let me know. I'll uh, definitely get back to you for further inputs. Definitely, I will drop a mail, sir. I will drop a mail. Yeah, yeah. Please drop an email in case you face any challenges while uh, performing image segmentation using deep learning. Okay sir thank you sir thank you very much Hello Hello Yes madam 
సార్ దిస్ ఈజ్ డాక్టర్ ఐరాల సునీత ప్రొఫెసర్ ఆఫ్ ఈసీ తిరుపతి అన్నమాచార్య ఇంజనీరింగ్ కాలేజ్ మై ఏరియా ఆఫ్ రీసెర్చ్ ఈజ్ ఇమేజ్ ఎన్హాన్స్మెంట్ సార్ బట్ టుడే యువర్ సెక్షన్ ఈజ్ వెరీ మచ్ యూస్ఫుల్ ఫర్ మీ అండ్ ఇట్ మోటివేట్ ఎ లాట్ టు గో ఫర్ డీప్ లెర్నింగ్ టు గైడ్ మై స్టూడెంట్స్ థ్యాంక్స్ అట్ ఫర్ యువర్ సెక్షన్ టుడే సార్ Okay, no doubts from my side. So just I want to say thanks for your valuable session today, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, I was there in uh, Sri Vidyani Ketan uh, just before lockdown. Uh, yes, sir. Even yeah, yeah. I, was there there in the, I was there in Tirupati there. I was taking up a session there. And glad to have you uh, today on the call. Thanks yeah. for sharing your feedback. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. participants if you have any doubts please ask now otherwise we are going to close the session for today two more messages in chat in this and we will go for them so uh, somebody was asking i am working on uh, detection of eye disease which part of the deep learning layers Uh, would be able to do the segmentation sir yes of course the output layer only okay uh, because you should be able to uh, what do you say if you have to identify at the same resolution then output layers only will be able to do that particular job you should have something like an encoder and a decoder kind of an architecture and uh, then you should be uh, so that the your whatever image input that you have given uh, you should be able to have uh, output image as the segmentation mask right then only you'll be able to train such kind of an architecture thank you sir thank you. so there's one more Thank question you, uh, can you tell me which algorithm is best for ocr uh, so i'll i'll be discussing in detail about ocr in the second or the third session so you will definitely be uh, definitely will get a good idea on how to use ocr and uh, python together i am working on with mammograms how can we relate deep learning techniques what specifically you working on mammograms madam if you can mail me i can help you on it further srinivas sir i think uh, we'll close the session for today maybe we'll take up the any uh, questions that are left we'll take it up tomorrow yes sir sure sir uh, kartik sir excuse me yes uh shall we uh what that is any fundamental we have to see for uh, tomorrow section uh, i don't think that's not uh, regarding not to- not needed not needed i am going to uh, keep the things as simple as possible okay you need not look for any kind of an fundamentals as such just come up with an open mind you will be able to no, grab all the things fundamental i was asking just fundamental like the uh, any uh preparation beginning for preparation not required okay. not required samir ji i i think you should uh, you can you should all that you have to do is you should have to come up with an open mind and then uh, to listen it completely i am going to uh, these all these webinars 1 2 3 all the three sessions will be self contained uh, currently you need not look for any kind of resources what you need to do is you need to uh, find out a way how you can apply these in some of your problems that you are working in okay that is what you need to uh understand and uh, how you can that is what you have, should have to grasp from these sessions sure kartik sir shall we stop yes yes we can we'll do it okay. tomorrow again okay uh thank you participants please submit your attendance also uh tomorrow there is a quiz at 9 am i request all participants to attempt that quiz in order to get certificate you need to score at least 50% tomorrow the session timings are 5 to 6 pm and uh, we will upload this video in youtube don't worry
thank you all yeah thanks a lot naidu sir thanks a lot uh, kartik sir and holy वेलकम थैंक यू कार्तिक सर वेलकम मैडम